Hey everybody, I appreciate you guys coming out. This is a, another webinar. Today we're gonna to be focused on a lot of quarterback drills or focus exclusively on quarterback drills. I have Coach Sean on here with me. He is with QB Takeover. Um, he runs 90% of the things that we do, especially in the Atlanta area. So if you are ever out here with us, um, you've definitely seen him and I'm sure we're gonna start traveling a little bit more after this is over. So you'll see him in your city soon. Um, but he's gonna be leading it. I'll be hopping in, answering some questions. And I mean, I'll be hopping in as he's explaining things and we'll get going. Cool, so what's up guys? Uh, happy to be here tonight. Like I said, I just wanna talk through a bunch of drills. I know a couple of weeks back, Quincy kind of take you through a, a few different ideas and kind of ways that we organize our trainings and a couple of key things we focus on. So just kind of want to pick up from there uh, and, and kind of keep going through. So, so first things first, the beginning part of our warm up. once we get the arms warmed up, we're trying to jump right into starting to create some movement for the quarterbacks. Uh, our main goal right off the bat is to ensure that they're throwing the same way every time. So same consistent pre-pass, and then key coaching points like getting the foot in the ground quick, staying vertical through the throw, controlling the finish uh, are things that we want to see every single time the quarterback throws the football. So once we establish that in our warm up, now we want to try to put them in situations where they have to work a little harder to maintain those same good mechanics. So I'm going to start with a series of, of shuffle drills, just nice, easy movement. We're just trying to create a little bit of extra movement for the QB. But then, like I said, the goal is the same every time of him getting stable, getting his foot in the ground quick, and then getting the ball off. So I'm going to kind of let this run through and we'll talk through it. Nothing fancy about the movement. We're working on the quarterback keeping his base in balance. And he's either going to be shuffling forward to the target or shuffling backwards. And then on the cue of either a clap or a ball call, we want the quarterback to establish a good stable base. Let's see if we can run this through and then deliver his good stationary throw. Trying to pause it here right as he stops and get the idea of what we're looking for here on a nice stable base move. Here's Malik. Um, getting to that good stable base. You can see his foot's getting in the ground quickly. And the big piece here as you watch him finish through his throw is controlling that finish, staying vertical at the end of the throw, ensuring all the power he creates goes out through the football towards the target. If you guys take a peek, I know we talked about this a good bit with Caleb and Austin, but in order to generate the energy, you can see when the guys are doing a real good job, uh, I think Malik did a much better job than Jamie did right there but they start loading up. So you want to see with the quarterback, you can see it right there. Jamie did a better job there. The inside of their right butt cheek is almost going to rotate towards the target. That's how they get loaded. Um, that's how they're going to get loaded. Uh, they get loaded there and that'll allow them to be more powerful and consistent thrower. So as we build off into kind of the next, I'm going to pause it here for a second as I queue up the next video. So as we kind of pull into the next set, um, now we're going to work on the quarterback, not only establishing that stable base, but we're adding a little bit of a, a reset of the hallway. So in this drill, we're going to have the quarterback work. Uh, hang on here. Zoom. You guys see my screen now, I think. So we're going to have the quarterback now shuffle laterally through the drill. And then once again on the cue, now he has the extra component of having to let his eyes lead his hips to create the straight line throw. And then from that position, once again, it's the idea of throwing the same way every time. So we'll have the quarterback move to his right or his left. We can alternate the movement here. But the key from a coaching standpoint, or if you're a quarterback doing this drill on your own, your focus should be on establishing that same consistent pre-pass position like Quincy just talked about, being loaded up in the back hip, ready to throw, getting the foot in the ground quickly, and then staying vertical through the finish. Those key things that we keep harping on. And once again, these are hopefully coaching points that your quarterbacks are, as a quarterback, that you're focused on kind of every time you throw and something that we want to focus on um, 
just continuing to, to reiterate those key points in all these different drills that we use. So one of the, so the, the why behind those two drills for you guys, because I think it's easy if we think about it in terms of why, the reason we want to do that is so we can simulate the movement of the pocket and just being able to reestablish. So the first one is just simple movements forward and backwards. Those are the subtle movements that we do all the time. And the second movement's off a of reset. So we want to be able to do those same subtle movements forward and backwards. And let's say I'm pushing the pocket forward. I got a receiver who's open on the right or the left, being able to readjust my body, eyes and feet get there on platform, on balance. Um, so you can still throw that same on target ball. When we say get back to the same position you've thrown in the, in the position that you throw a warm up throw in a million times in your life, right? So if you think about it like that, if I've thrown in one particular position a million times, how can I get back there so I can be as consistent as possible every single time I throw that throw the football, no matter what's going on in the pocket, getting there. And then you can start building off that um, as you start getting more developed and start to do other things from the pocket. I just want to show one quick variation here um, off of the reset drill. And it's one that we started playing around with with you know, kind of the better quarterbacks we were training as we were going through the draft process uh, with Jalen and Drew and Ben. Uh, we just wanted to, you know, instead of just resetting to set the hallway, we wanted to create some of those pocket movement scenarios that they're going to utilize. You know, uh, Quincy talked a few weeks ago about the difference between subtle and evasive movement. And here's just a nice little subtle movement in the pocket, creating a little bit of time and space to throw. So off of that reset of the shuffle, we've added either a pull through or a kickback movement. Um, once again, just to add a little bit extra to uh, what the quarterbacks are working on and then continuing to, for them to have that mindset of, I have to finish under control every single time. Hang on one second here. Hang on, I lost my. You guys can see my screen now, right? Yeah, we got it. All I'm right, sorry. Here. <laughs> well, this is the technical difficulties. All right, here we go. All right, so here's what we're talking about here. Um, you know, similar to the last drill where we have the quarterback moving laterally, and now instead of just setting the hallway, he's also creating some movement from the line of scrimmage. Here's a little bit of a kickback move that you see. Once again, getting stable and getting his foot in the ground, controlling the finish. And here we go again here with some reps where now the quarterback's pulling through. Sorry, next slide. Pulling through here to execute the throw with the idea now that he's creating, um, you know, just like he was getting upfield pressure, having to pull up in the pocket. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a movement that we, uh, that we talked about, you know, with the quarterback getting movement off his right side, not only having to get up, but then to get his hallway set or create a straight line throw back out to his right side. You know, the key here in all these first three drills is that regardless of the movement, we're continuing to get back as you see Max here with a really good pre-pass position. He's loading his back hip ready to throw and his hips have led his eyes to create a straight line throw. So those key pieces, we wanna make sure we're incorporating every time throughout those drills. Cool. Does anybody have a question in terms of that stuff? You can just type it in here while Sean's pulling up the next drill. And I'm going to move right from guys. stationary throws to, to some kind of off-platform stuff now. Um, so if you have any questions on kind of the stationary stuff, let's knock those out now before we kind of move forward. Uh, Jason, I saw you ask about staying vertical through the throw. The, the thought process there is, you know, not allowing that tilt or pull down that kind of happens sometimes on the collapse of the throw. We'll see quarterbacks if, if they're taking too long of a stride or they're not decelerating and stopping their hips square, they have a tendency to have that front leg lock out, which will cause them to tilt and pull down on the throw. So the idea of staying vertical, you know, I talk about, you know, just kind of imagining you're on a pole and just kind of rotating through the turn of the throw, staying nice and vertical as opposed to tilting or pulling down, if that makes sense. I'll take the other two and you can just hop on the, uh, get the next drill. Uh, Anthony, in terms of using these, so we'll do them as both, but these are a lot of times like intro drills to a workout. So um, when we say warm up, we'd like to have our guys as warm as possible before we get started. 
Um, so we want them to get going, but then as we start rolling, we want to be uh, – these will these will be in there after our initial arm warm-up. Um, but we do a, a different set of things for warm-ups. Uh, what way can we ensure uh, our foot gets down quickly? Uh, that's a tough one. So we would, in terms of that, the foot strike process, we, we want to work that without a ball. If you start working on your foot strike solo, then you'll be able to uh, bring it together in terms of your actual throw motion. So if you start thinking about it when you have the football in your hand, it gets really difficult. Um, we want to start working on things like that in terms of changing our form without a football. You can do that with a towel, a med ball, any of those things, Mr. Downing. Our normal training sessions range, if it's a private session, maybe an hour. And if it's, damn it. And if it is a group session, an hour and 30 minutes to an hour and 15. Uh, Matthew Davis, I'm not um, exactly familiar with the lingo in terms of a skinny arm pad. Um, so I can't really help you with that. All right, so I said I was going to go right to off-platforming. And first, let's talk about the drops a little bit. And it kind of builds right off of the idea of those last three drills we looked at. So if we're talking about being stationary and under control, then and let's get out of kind of drill mode where it's a lot of shuffling and get into more of a normal footwork that a quarterback would utilize. You know, our goal with everything is to reiterate and establish some key pieces, but then as quickly as we can get it to a position where it's applicable for the quarterback to use on the field. So we go right into some footwork here with just our rhythm throws, quarterbacks being set at the top of the drop to throw their first progression. And then a second drill here where we're talking about um, them working through their progression. So we're going to start here with our rhythm throws. And all we're building off of is this kind of offset cross set drill that I know a lot of QBs and a lot of co coaches will use in their warm up, right? The idea of the receiver being offset and preaching the idea of the quarterback setting his hallway or creating a straight line throw, right? Turning his hips to the target and then making sure that he's got the same throw every single time. So now just to get into the normal drop that a quarterback will utilize, we want to add some movement to that idea. All the quarterback's doing here is dropping straight back on the line. You can see his eyes are straight down the field. And then on the ball call or the clap, the quarterback should be using his eyes to lead his hips to the hallway. And once again, the goal here is to make sure he creates a straight line throw. And whether he's throwing to the right or the left, he's creating a position where he can throw the same way every single time. So we talked about it the first week, but him using that left foot as a break so we're not trying to get any more – the step before we throw. So if we're throwing on five or we're throwing on three, if, on the, if we're throwing on five, the fourth step, we're throwing on three, the second step, that foot does not need to be working back anymore. We're only using that step to stop our energy. Is that same drill Jayla was doing that first week? But that is the break step. So consider that your breaking mechanism. That stops next foot in the ground right, right, right underneath your shoulder. So we can throw without wasting energy with our body going back. And that one right there was not a great rep by Jalen. The rep before was really good. This one's not. You can see his energy still working backwards. Yeah, here's the break step here. So you can see his eyes are leading his hip. He's starting to open his hip on that break step. So not only is he stopping his momentum from continuing to go backwards, but he's already started to set his hallway to the left side. And it's so important that it's done on the cross step because now he's in a position where he can just put his plank step in the ground. And once again, here's that really good, consistent low leg in the back hip, ready to deliver a straight line throw. You know, similar to the rhythm drill, we're moving into just a read or a reset drill. The idea of going from being able to throw not just the first progression, but then reset into the second progression. So it looks similarly on the start with the quarterback dropping straight down the line. He's going to set to his first progression. So in this case, I tell the quarterbacks just to imagine you have like a spot route right over the ball. So you can see Nate here, his eyes and hips loaded, ready to throw that rhythm route first. We're assuming that route's taken away. And then his eyes will lead his hips to the second progression. So if you think about a normal spot curl concept, you know, a hand concept that a lot of people are familiar with, that's the idea 
we've just exaggerated it into like a big 90 degree turn. Because if the point of the drill is just to really have the quarterback work harder to establish these two different uh, straight line throws and be set and stable to execute each one, then if we can add a little extra on the movement, we're just forcing that quarterback to work a little bit harder um, and be more, more disciplined with his mechanics every time. But as you can see, here's that good example of Max not only creating both straight line throws, being set to throw the rhythm first, but then being set to throw the second, right? Here's that really good pre-pass position we talked about before. And here you can see him stay vertical through the throw, controlling all the way through on the finish. Anybody have right, any so questions that, on those things? Yeah, any questions on the on the drops or the reset? Controlling your wrist on every throw. Um, maybe you have something for that, Sean, but I don't Yeah, what are you to... talking about, Matt? Go ahead and, like, give me three more words on, like, what you're talking about there. Um, you know, when we talk about the wrist, one of the main things we talk about is – the idea of it is, it, is it curled where you're kind of cupping and what sometimes will cause, you know, your, your arm to orbit around and not get great ball flight. You know, the big thing with the wrist here um, is that you're trying to keep it mostly flat through the throw. It's a very technical piece that I don't think you want to think about too much through the throwing motion. But if we can establish a, a good kind of wrist position in our pre-pass, then it's a lot easier to ensure that position stays the same throughout the throw. Um, let me know if I'm kind of answering your question a little bit or what you're talking about, Matt. Um, you know, the big coaching point for that is normally the elbow issues are established from earlier in the throw. For example, if your front side is flying open early, it will cause your elbow to kind of drag behind, which will then kind of curl your wrist. Very rarely do you have quarterbacks that are really sound mechanically through the entire throw that end up in a bad wrist position. So if you're feeling that or you're getting that feedback, um, I would look at some pieces earlier in the throw that may be causing the wrist um, to not be consistent. Guys, when we talk about reps, I think that's a good question. We don't – it's not a number typically um, unless we're doing something like draft preparation where we have a guy in a real limit. It's typically uh, based on until you get it right. Like if you're having a private session with one of us, we don't say, all right, we're going to do this many number of things, but you need to be able to consistently do it so we aren't, we're no longer getting it wrong. Like it's just until we have it understood. And until we get to that point, then we're not, uh, then we're going to keep working it. Anthony, I see a good question about asking, can you reset to a third target? Like simulating your third progression. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's a great idea and, and one that we use a lot as well. If we're talking kind of full concept progression, but, you know, I, the idea there remains the same. In the same way I transition from my first progression to my second, I want those exact same key points going from my second to my third. Eyes leading the hips, getting stable first, and then throwing the same way every time. Some questions about kind of how to stay vertical, right? I made the big point about staying vertical through the throw. So uh, at the end, let me take you back. I have a couple of videos I pulled to kind of show a few drills uh, that kind of isolates the turn of the throw and gives you some ideas of, of working to stay vertical. But the best way to do it is to control that in a really isolated um, drill, right? So anything within the sequence of the throwing motion, I think is important to, to kind of isolate that one piece. So remind me if I forget, but at the very end here, we'll go into some uh, some drill work about staying vertical through the turn. Anything uh, else you wanted to pull out there, Q? Yep, I'm gonna talk about stop leaning during the throw. Yep. So leaning is a big thing. When guys start getting here in their, and the, you see the spine angle not staying consistent through your throwing motion, one thing that helps, and we can still call it just staying connected, just keeping your back foot connected to the ground. That's something I'd have guys do when they're really struggling with the ability to lean 
Usually their back legs coming way off the ground and they're leaning. After you can get yourself back vertical, though, I don't want to talk about that foot staying connected. That is just a tool I use to teach people to keep their spine angle uh, consistent throughout the throw motion. So we're, we're rotating on this axis and we're not throwing and rotating here, if that makes sense, Brady. Um, yes, that's the same thing. I, I don't know what that means in terms of the elbow arm moving faster than the football. Um, it's all connected, so it's tough for me to make sense of. Sean, what are you going to be putting up next? Just so I'm going to go into some off-platform stuff, some throw-on-the-run stuff, once we feel ready for it. Matt, I'm looking at your question about should the shoulder be perpendicular to the line of scrimmage. Um, yes. As he's dropping back, then, yeah, I would want the shoulder to be – uh, you know, pretty much held straight line uh, down the line, if you will. But 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 I, I worry more about the shoulder being set and kind of pointing at where I'm throwing, if that makes sense, right? So in this case, because I kind of have the rhythm route being a spot route, then I do like the idea of the shoulder being pointed straight at it, which I guess to your point would be perpendicular to the sideline if he's dropping off the sideline. Um, but in the case where your rhythm route is a speed out or a, or a bang eight or something of that nature, then obviously we want your shoulder pointed in that direction, if that makes sense. And then Landry, I know Quincy just talked about the back foot drag. We'll talk about that a little bit at the end as well. But, but Quincy made the point there, you know, foot in the ground staying connected is good. Um, having the foot come off the ground, as long as you're able to stop the hip square, just as good, right? And we've seen a lot of quarterbacks be very successful using both techniques. Uh, we'll pull some of that video here at the end. All right, cool to run into some off-platform stuff? Mm-hmm. All right, cool. So, you know, as we talk off-platform here, I think one of the interesting pieces is, you know, there's so much uh, similarity between what we're talking about in our on-platform throws. So we spent a lot of time on our stationary throws talking about let's try to throw the same way every single time. And it seems easy when you're able to get fully stable on the ground in pre-pass position and then throw. And then as guys are throwing on the run, it seems like, well, there's all these different angles that I'm attacking and all these different ways if I'm going right or going left. And, you know, I think one of the key pieces here is to find that same type of consistency every off-platform throw you make. And these are kind of the key pieces uh, that I like to highlight. The idea of shortening the stride is, is about getting your feet underneath your hips right? That'll help you stay vertical through the throw. Same thing we were talking about on platform. We talk about off platform. Quincy used the term of quarterbacks that kind of collapse on the throw, which I think is a really good way to, to explain what that looks like if the quarterback's not keeping his chest up through the throw. And then similarly to what we talked about on platform, shoulders always going to be close to the target. Um, and the idea of squaring the hips to the target kind of helps create that straight line throw. So this first drill is really just creating the easiest version of an off-platform throw, right? One where the quarterback just attacks. Wherever the receiver is on the field, he's going to stick his foot in the ground off the drop and literally just run straight at the receiver, right? So the nature of a straight downhill throw creates a situation where the quarterback's hips are already square to his target. You can see... Imagine if Jamie here had a belt on, his belt buckle would be pointed straight at the receiver. And you can see how his front shoulder, his left shoulder, is closed to the target. He does a really good job of shortening his stride. You can see how his front foot, you know, as opposed to being kind of way out in front, you know, is, is underneath his hips, which allows him then to drive up through his glute and get – ground force power into his throw. You know, so we start talking about driving off the back foot, in this case, the right foot for a right-handed QB. We talk about staying vertical through the throw. You know, it's all these same things we were talking about when we were talking about stationary throws, same key principles here that we're working on on an off-platform throw. Get yeah, it, Q. No, I thought that was perfect. Um, that, that's a... 
this is a really good way to get going in terms of uh, getting started with your off platform. And then you can start taking this to the next level by adding the break and claim and then working away from targets. These are just like, this is good because we saw some of the other things that we did the other week where we had the five cones and we were going to different ones based on the number called. This is a great way to get started in terms of really teaching guys good fundamentals and good principles in terms of that. I think that's exactly right. Because as we're going through this, clearly there's nothing earth shattering or, or extremely difficult about these first four or five drills we've been talking about. But, you know, I think of everything as kind of a progressive, you know, um, you know, progressive drill series or progressive, you know, kind of taking your quarterback through with what he can handle first and establishing really good mechanics and then, you know, what are the drills then that's kind of the next level piece? What challenges the quarterback a little bit more, right? So as we go into this next off-platform drill, here's a good example. We just worked the quarterback attacking straight downhill to the target. Once again, the hips are already squared in the target. It's a nice, easy position to be in when throwing. So now the next piece, let's create a more difficult off-platform throw. So this next drill that we talk about here is – kind of a flat escape drill, kind of simulates the quarterback um, escaping flat down the line and now having to get his hips and shoulder in position to throw to a receiver who's, you know, not straight downhill from the direction he's moving. So if we imagine the quarterback at the top of the drop getting upfield pressure, maybe the tackle is 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 driving the end up the field now the quarterback has to get up underneath that defensive end and then get out underneath and flag escape right because we all know the situation where the quarterback's not able to attack downhill to the target and those are the 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 the, the uh scenarios where we still want to be able to be consistent with the throw so you see as a bunch of these guys work through the draw they're doing is transitioning from a drop into a run but it does a good job here of creating an angle where the quarterback has to set the hallway or create the straight line throw to be able to drive the ball down the field. I think I slow Aaron down here uh, in a second. I'm going to try and find that clip because it does a good job of, of kind of showing you the position we're looking for with his hip square to the target and his shoulder close to the target. Um, on – when we're doing that flat escape, right, one of the tricks that we that we like to talk about is just using this right foot to cross over my left. So if I'm running this way, I'll try and do it with my hands. You guys should be able to see it. If I'm running forward like this, when it's time to throw as a right-handed quarterback, my left foot hits here, my right foot should cross over this way, right? So it allows my feet to get here and my top half will, will rotate this way. That'll create an create the energy that you're looking for in order to create the ground force. If you could see that last step by Malik, he was doing it. His foot's crossing over here and his shoulders are closing there. And then we can explode. And a lot of times you'll see guys just pop up because the energy, that's a great clip of it. Right foot crosses his right foot crosses over his left, his shoulders close. That allows him to get in his hip here. When I say get in the hip, get in the hip, create the torque with the hip so that he can generate energy. You know, we talk so much about the consistency, and I think, you know, those drills do a really good job of showing, you know, regardless of which way you're escaping, either right or left, that those same key principles are there. So that same clip, let me bring it back up real quick. That same clip we just showed to Malik um, getting into that good position with his hip square and his shoulder closed. You know, as we go left here, we're going to be able to find that similar position my pause game is pretty weak tonight, but if we can figure it out here, um, give me one second, see if I can stop here at the right moment. Nope. Um, you know, that idea of the hip being square and the shoulder closed, same one we talked about on the uh, going to the right, just pops up again. If you're looking for it, I'm gonna, I can teach, tell guys something else that we do. That Go I ahead. Think. So if you guys see like the coaching progression, first we teach you guys to do things in a very regimented manner. Like you know exactly what you're doing. There's not a lot of reaction in the drill, right? So that's the first way we teach it. 
then we start making it harder, but it's still simple in terms of you're not thinking about what to do. You just have to do the command. Then as we start making drills harder and we start leveling up, every time we make it harder, we just make you have to react to more, uh, either react to more cues or react to different objectives in terms of working away, working to this cone. Like every time we want to make it harder, we just add levels of reaction, but we don't change the things that we're doing. We don't use distractions, we add reactions. So we'll add different cones. Um, you're working to this cone, you're working away from a defender, things like that. Or we're gonna tell you, all right, work to five, work to one, right? So you have to change angles and still be able to make the same throws, even though um, it's not in a regimented fashion. No doubt. And, and here's a clip, uh, just a quick example of Jamie, uh, hopefully proving that point I was trying to make where in the same position we just talked about with Malik going to his right, here's Jamie going to his left, but once again, it's hip square, it's shoulder closed. And so now, whether we're going flag escape to right or flag escape left, which really are two of the most extreme versions of an off-platform throw we make, save for maybe a pressure throw where we're actually retreating away from the line of scrimmage. But if we can find the same consistency, then you know it stands that we should have an opportunity to be consistent with the throw every time. Any questions about um, off-platform stuff? They want to know when you want to start shortening your stride. Yeah, so, so in my mind, it's the last two steps, if that makes sense, right? So, because, and here's why. Obviously, we can't start chopping our feet uh, or slowing down. The whole reason most of the time that we are off-platform is because we're trying to, you know, create time and space away from the defects, whether it being a called spring out bootleg type thing, or we're escaping pressure and having to move. Um, so there's a big uh, issue when we try to slow down or get under control too early. Um, the reality of this drill or any kind of movement or throwing on the run is it really only takes those two steps before you drive. And remember that the shortening of the stride is just to get into a position where we can drive through the glute as we throw and keep our chest up, if that makes sense. Uh, a couple of the quarterbacks who were kind of struggling or were kind of over striding into their throw, I talked about them just kind of jogging, you know, regular full stride, and then thinking about the last two steps, kind of left, right, nice quick steps to get yourself in position. So I know this. It's the same thing as it's narrow. Go ahead, Q. It's the same thing as thrown from the pocket. We talk about a break step and then put no a step under the ground. Like it all it's really consistent. It's a lot of consistencies from throwing in the pocket and throwing in the run. Um, but it's really just the break step and then putting your next foot in the ground so you can generate energy and your foot being underneath your body so that you can be in the right position. Um, if you're taking two biggest steps, your foot's outside your body and you can't generate any energy. Anthony, I see your question about dividing up training sessions or you know, in the same way that, um, you know, and I think of everything because I, so I was a high school coach for 12 seasons as well. So, you know, I, there's things I do in a private training right session, but I think of just the ability to do the it. same thing in, uh, you know, in, at a practice with, with all my quarterbacks of different age groups. And so I think it depends on, on what you're trying to focus on or where the most work needs to be. You know, if I was working with a younger quarterback and we were trying to establish certain things, then yeah, I might only do on platform throws, right? I might not get much past a really good mechanic drill warm up, and then maybe the rhythm drill that you saw and, and the reset drill, right? And just really hammer home the idea of making every throw the same and get the quarterback to understand what that feels like. Um, but normally with quarterbacks that I've worked with a while or, or the, the better guys, you just want to continue to challenge them through in a training session and create, continue to create, as Quincy was talking about earlier, scenarios where they have to try to find answers. And so in that case, I want to hit them with everything. You know, so maybe the warm-up's the same the first 10 minutes, and from there on out, I want to make sure they're getting different things that they have to work through the same way it would happen at practice or in a game. So I like the idea of maybe doing the rhythm drill to get them working, set in their hallways, creating straight line throws and getting the ball out on time and then go right into, you know, the flag escape drill and have them make some really difficult off platform. And even those drills are really just part of the warm up. 
because what I want to get to in maybe the second half of a training session or deeper into an organized practice, maybe my second individual period or when I steal times away from special teams, then I want to get into more of our full concept, game applicable, create situations they're going to see on Friday or Saturday or Sunday, um, if that answers your question. So I think, you know, you know, too, Anthony, as an older quarterback of what you're able to handle. Um, you know, I think you can uh, really challenge yourself to do as much as you can each day. If that makes sense. Landry, it really depends on where our quarterbacks are at with their teams. Some guys have practice every day where they're thrown and they might come out once or twice a week. Some guys don't. And we're going to work these drills four times a week. So it really depends on where you're at, what your school provides you and what you have to do. Like we have to take care of your arm. So your arm's not dead. So all those things matter. Cool. Let's uh, let's move on. Let's get to our last drill. Let's get to our last drill and let's show the Deshaun clip. Perfect. Perfect. So the last one we're talking about here is um, after the flag escape is let's go into some of our the three cone. So it's it's our last and we talked about this a little bit. It's similar to the five cone drill. Obviously, it's a lot very similar, obviously. But I want to show you guys the idea of creating um, creating more difficult throws off platform. So now we're talking about the throws where maybe the quarterback is escaping to his left and is then trying to throw back to his right. Um, and I just pulled a clip of, uh, with Jamie where we were doing this uh, probably about a year, year and a half ago and working through this idea of creating a bunch of different throws. So let me find it real quick, here we go. So as you can see in this drill, you know, basically I'm giving them three cones, the middle cone down the middle, I'm just calling cone two, left is one, uh, right is three. So now it's just the way I can control. I know he's got different receivers he's throwing to, but I can control at what angle he has to escape. And then regardless of what angle he's escaping, he has to create the straight line throw to deliver. And here's another good one come up here where he's escaping all the way out to the right. And you can see him work to get his hips square, his shoulder closed to be able to execute that throw all the way back to his left. Anytime we're working these types of throws, one of the things I stress for all of our quarterbacks is for them to understand the idea here is not to run right and throw across your body to the left, right? That's not what you see Pat Mahomes doing on Sundays. It's not what you see Deshaun doing, Aaron Rodgers, all these guys that, you know, you'll see all over Sports Center for this crazy throw they made. I can't stress enough that what they did was even though they were escaping hard to their right, they still had their shoulder close to the target, got their hips square, and put themselves in a position to make a straight line throw. And like I said, this next clip here of Jamie is exactly what we're talking about. You can see him work his hip around to be able to make that throw. And, you know, once again, we just want to create as many difficult scenarios as we can for the quarterback and let him self-discover his way through the solution. You know, I think anytime we can get to that point, it takes us past us just telling the quarterback how to do it, and he starts to understand how to figure it out on his own. Did we hit everything question-wise about off-platform? Caleb, uh, we'll talk about some accuracy stuff here as we get into some of the mechanic stuff. Really, when we talk about accuracy, it's about doing things the same way every time, right? It's about creating a consistent, repeatable throwing motion. And if we can do the same thing every time, then you're, you'll find that consistent accuracy that you're looking for. Um, so it's not a one thing like, hey, just do this and you'll be accurate. Um, that's where putting the time in, putting the work in, working through a bunch of different drills such as this, um, you know, can get you there. Um, let's talk about, and I want to pull up that clip of Deshaun um, to kind of highlight the point that we talked about earlier with the idea of, do we keep the foot connected? Do we keep the back foot in the ground um, or not? Um, you'll see a lot of the quarterbacks that do keep their back foot in the ground. Um, and then, you know, Deshaun was one of the first guys that, you know, being around Quincy and getting to see Deshaun throw a lot, where I noticed he was one that you know, was very comfortable with his back foot coming off the ground. 
um, which, you know, early on caught my eye because I was of the mindset that back foot connected was the best way to create the sudden stop of the throw or that deceleration phase of the throw. So here's just a quick clip. And what you're going to see here is Deshaun throwing like a deep fade ball. So he's really trying to create power and throw that ball as far as he can down the field, right? Really trying to get that ball out there. And you'll see his back foot comes off the ground. But what you'll also notice is he does such a great job of decelerating and still finishing with his hips square to the target. Now, I think this is difficult for a lot of young QBs because it takes a really good, you know, kind of ability to, to control your body. Deshaun being such a phenomenal athlete is, I think, part of the reason why he's so successful at this. Matt Downing, who was, if you were here in the beginning of the uh, webinar, jumped on quickly. He's a guy whose back foot will come off, but he does a really good job, like Deshaun does, of stopping those hips square. Uh, Quincy, why don't you elaborate on it a little bit? Yeah, so the thing that we want to be able to – he's trying to generate as much ground force as he possibly can. His foot come, can come off. His foot can stay connected. He throws the ball both ways. And really what we're just trying to do is be able to make sure that with his pelvis and his belly button – or his crotch stop directly at the target. So as long as we accelerate fast and stop fast, those are two keys, accelerate and stop, the energy has to go somewhere and that energy ends up coming out of the ball and not wasted by him like walking through the throw. As you'll see a lot of guys do when they start trying to throw hard, they end up walking or pushing forward and it's not a great job. You're not dec decelerating, your energy is going out of your body and not out of the ball. No doubt, no doubt. Um, one of the ways, you know, that we kind of, and we talked about this a little earlier, and this will kind of go to, to two pieces. So I'll, I'll show this quick click, clip of Jamie. Um, here's a drill where we kind of overemphasize the idea of his back foot staying connected. Um, it's a drill that, as we talked about earlier, that maybe I want to fix or isolate one specific part of the throw. So if you have a quarterback who over rotates as Quincy was just talking about and waste their power because instead of their hips finishing square to the target, they continue to finish in this case for a right-handed throw off to the left. It's just wasted energy. <laughs> or you have a quarterback who tilts or pulls down, right? We talked about staying vertical and there was a question about how do we work on a quarterback staying vertical. So here's a clip with, with Jamie where we are forcing him to keep his back foot in the ground. So I'm telling him on the setup of this drill, okay, get your front foot in the ground already, where it would be for you when you take your drive step. And you're going to start from that position. And now we're going to let the hips rotate, but we're not going to let the back foot move. We're going to keep it connected to the ground. Now, once again, I don't promote throwing this way, right? This is not an actual throwing motion that I want to see utilized on the field. It's just a way to isolate the idea of forcing the hips to stop, right? Create a feel for what that feels like for the QB. Um, and then similarly, I'll show you the, the kind of front view of the same drill. You see the idea here of him staying vertical through the turn. So now his hips have stopped square to the target. And instead of tilting or pulling down, he's staying nice and vertical through the throw. Sometimes you just have to overemphasize the thing that you're doing. So we're overcorrecting something in order to get him somewhere that when it's time to go full speed, he's most comfortable. So if he was a tilter or something like that, and we did this, it would completely eliminate the tilt. It's really hard to bring your body over to your left um, and keep your foot on the ground. Or if you're over rotating, it's pretty hard to do when we're thinking about keeping our foot back there. Um, so there's a lot of guys who, who throw like this and finish like that naturally. Um, but that's just our way of, of correcting some things, and then they can bring it back together. But I want in, to invite you guys to answer any questions um, so we can get you out of here tonight because we're at 46 minutes, and we'll probably lose you at an hour. Mm -hmm. We've we got a hand raise. Who's that, Jared? I'm going to bring you on so you can talk. We're going to try and do five questions. Jared, a lot of talk. Boom. Jared, are you there? Oh, let me do this. I messed that up. 
All right. Okay. Jared, you there? No? no? All right. There's that. Okay. Next guy will get up. Anthony, we're going to bring you on. Anthony, shoot. shoot What's up, shoot. Arch? Can you hear me? We can hear you. What's going yeah, on? We bro? got you, Anthony. Go ahead, man. Awesome. Good to hear from you guys. Um, I was just watching throughout all those clips is the backstroke throughout all the QBs and their throwing motion. How would Different, you make huh? – how, yeah, how would you make it more consistent? Because I know we talked about having it be more circular than bringing it back and then coming through. So how would you like to, to drill that to make sure the QB's elbow is really a more circular motion than – back to horizontal L and then trying to shoot it forward like normal. I think, uh, you know, for me, one is we, you can almost go brain damage trying to focus on every individual part of the throw, right? And so just like we talk about from a power generation part, we got to think of the arm path as really just starting well and then finishing well if that makes sense so the big thing and i'll bring up a clip i'm leaking here in a second but the big thing we talk about on the throw and i'm left-handed so in my case i'm throwing in this direction is just to have a, a good starting motion right we talk about equal and opposite we talk about letting the front arm separate with the throwing arm if i create kind of a natural scooping motion with my elbow that'll start to promote a circular arm path as opposed to one that just goes backwards or it lifts to a vertical L, right? The idea of starting well helps promote a more circular path through the throw. But the, when I talk about arm path, I like the idea of starting well, but it's really just about being fast and fluid. And it's why you can see so many quarterbacks, and you saw it through these guys, different clips throwing, everybody's slightly different. As long as they're putting themselves in a good starting position and then they're just efficient with the arm motion, they're just able to move the arm through fast and accelerate the arm through you're getting what you're looking for does that make sense yeah that means and then would it would it be bad if a quarterback dropped the ball because i know you watch patrick mahomes and he has that little baseball swag sure. where he's dropping it below his elbow does that just really um depend on the his athletic ability or is there do you recommend not doing that uh, it doesn't bother me. Let's put it that way, right? I, I think, are, are there opportunities to be more efficient? I think there probably are for most guys, but, you know, you're seeing Patrick Mahomes, Kyler Murray, the guy dips a little bit, you know, uh, you it's, see Trevor Lawrence, even yeah. Justin Fields, a guy that we're around a lot, right? Has a little bit of a dip. Um, you know, It's I not ideal. Go ahead, Pew. I was going to say, it's not ideal, but there's some guys who still do it in a quick enough rate that it doesn't matter. It's really about just your load to release. So if you do that and it's really, really efficient and you're getting the ball to your hands really quickly, like don't, if it's not broke, don't fix it. If you think that it's something that's going to drastically improve or you're dropping it really low, then it's something you're going to want to address. And then with that left arm, do you, is it safe to have, have that push back the ball or do you just want it non-existent with the, with the start of the backstroke? Okay, so I don't want it to push the ball back, right? Now, it's not to say that if I, ha if I, you know, a lot of quarterbacks will tap, right, which is a thing you see more and more, and a bunch of the guys that we work with use that as well as kind of a, a you know, a cueing point to start their throw. There's a difference between kind of cueing the ball back but still allowing the front arm to separate as opposed to pushing, which now kind of can get the arm caught behind the body. So I think it's a really, once again, I think a situation that I've seen overcoached a lot, and that's where you see quarterbacks with, with some issues in their throwing motion. Uh, I'm a big believer in just focusing more on what's natural for you. Um, but I do think there's a there's a argument that being equal and opposite, letting the front arm release with the throwing arm and kind of keeping those things together allow you to be more efficient through the movement, right? The idea of kind of, uh, what's the word, like balancing the body through that movement. Anything on that, Q? No, I think that's perfect. Um, I'm going to answer two questions. 
Alex, we talked about um, techniques on quarterbacks not popping up, and I think you're talking about just getting right to vertical and not the separation. I would work on those same things that Sean was just talking about. I would do those with something other than football. It's hard. It's very, very hard to uh, change a movement pattern with the same thing that you developed it with. So I would not. I would just do it with like a a plyo ball, a sock, a towel, anything like that. William, in terms of you, when we, we say stop quick and hitch quickly, you get off balance, that's just because you're not able to break right now. That means your last step is crossing over too far. So you're asking your, la your fifth or final step to stop your energy, get on platform and drive forward. There's too many things to ask your body to do all at one time. Work on your break step. Boom. You want to answer the next one in terms of pocket? Yeah. yeah. So, Jared, I see your question about thoughts on throwing with your shoulder square. I, I don't, I don't understand that question. So, you ha you have to have your shoulder closed to the target, right? I mean, you know, some of these things maybe you see different coaches coax slightly differently, but this is pretty much a, a you know, a, 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 you know, everybody believes in the idea that the shoulder has to be closed to the target in order to throw. So maybe I just misunderstood your question. Um, in terms of pocket movement, what situation do you teach a QB? You know, that back foot, front foot first, you know, got a little play on Twitter. Quincy did a good job a few weeks ago. Uh, the webinars are coming out. So if you miss one of the earlier ones, you want to get back to and listen to it. Um, you know, Quincy did a good job of, of talking through the difference between a subtle movement and evasive movement. Uh, but really quick, unless you're going to throw immediately off a small subtle movement that's the one time where moving back foot first would have real value for you um and just not something that happens in a large amount of a quarterback's movement in the pocket so if he's going to move evasively or he's going to move and then set his hallway to throw anyway um then most coaches and and what i really believe in are preaching just move right if you have pressure just move um, and then worry about throwing after that. So front foot, back foot, uh, both are good. I don't know what this means. You pivot instead of push. That doesn't, that's not registering for me. I don't, does it make sense to you, Sean? Yeah, I, I, you know, I think, you know, if we talk about that drill I showed with Jamie, um, with the idea of, you know, I think he's saying maybe he, instead of driving and creating a little bit of, of like a hip slide into the throw, like shifting his weight from back foot to front foot, he just kind of spins as he throws. You know, it's interesting as, as a lot of guys have gone deep into rotational athletes and generating good power from the quarterback position, there's a lot of things out there that, you know, maybe I would disagree with the way it's being coaxed right now, and that would be one of them. Um, you know, we're big on the idea of, obviously, you have to create rotational power. We want to minimize linear movement as best we can. Um, but I'm a big believer, and I know I've talked with Quincy a lot, too, of there is going to be a natural hip slide as that weight shifts from the back foot to the front foot. So the idea of that really kind of over coax back foot not moving at all, simply rotating on the hips, um, you know, I think it's useful to generate power in tight spaces, and there's a time where that's important. Um, but I don't think it's the most efficient way every time, if that answers your question. As far as how to get better at it, um, it goes back to just working, isolating that piece. So work on getting the foot in the ground quickly, but creating a little bit of a hip slide, creating a shifting of the weight from the back foot to the front foot. Now, not so much that we lock out and tilt or over rotate. So we got to work on controlling it. And those were the drills we showed earlier um, with Jamie. A uh, bunch of questions about quicker release. Um, you know, the big thing on, for me on this is you know, quicker release is a thing that I think gets talked about too much. Um, think about being fast, think about being fluid. Um, if, if all I wanted, if all I cared about was having the quickest release in all of football, you know, there's a way where you can just throw the ball super quick, right? you wouldn't get much velocity on the ball. You wouldn't be very accurate with it. It certainly wouldn't be a consistent repeatable motion. So guys that just want to stand there with a stopwatch and time separation to ball coming out of your hand, I, I think we're focused too much on the wrong things. Um, you know, kind of be okay with the way you throw. Continue to try to be more efficient with the movement. 
and work on arm acceleration. I would worry about that a lot more than I would worry about just having a really quick release. You want to pop into one of these, Q? Anything that's jumping out at you that you want to talk about? I don't even know what sagittal thrower means, so no, that's above my I know what the grade. sagittal playing is, but um, I think there's a, a couple guys that, that really focus um, – you know, on the difference of, you know, once again, it's another idea of like linear movement versus uh, rotational, but you're, I'm with you. I'm not a biomechanics expert. Sagittal playing is like your body split down the middle and creating a right and left side of your body. Um, if a sagittal thrower means they're rotating from right to left, then I guess I would be a fan of that, but I don't know. Yeah, better than me. Yeah, Steve and I talked, that's so funny. So Steve, I saw it jumped on. We just talked about it for uh, for a few minutes the other day, and I told him the same thing. I'm not even sure what that means. Yeah, there's so many things that could affect your spiral more than grip. Your front shoulder opening too fast. Uh, your wrist getting loose. Your arm slashing. I mean, there's a number of different things. How you're trying to let the ball come off your fingers. Like, the list goes on and on. So, yeah, more than that. All right, this is uh, – I think we're getting done. Yeah. Uh, I, a question I just really like about what have you been recommending for quarterbacks who can't get out of the house right now, because it's the reality of what we're dealing with. Um, you know, Quincy talked throughout about how many of these drills you can do without a ball in your hand, right? Especially the guys that are asking questions about, hey, I'm not stable at the top of my drop, right? Or um, I, I'm not able to create straight line throws or how can I work on arm acceleration? You know, the idea of just using a mirror and kind of mirroring the arm path that you're looking for and, and getting that visual feedback using a towel and working on arm acceleration um, and the footwork stuff. I mean, I tell guys all the time, if I'm working on that turn at the top, remember that rhythm drill we were showing with Jalen Hurts in the beginning thrown to his left. I mean, you can just be standing there in your family room watching TV, you know, set your hallway to that chair in the corner of your room and just continue to get those reps of two steps and creating straight line throws. I think it's a good time to, you know, you, you don't just get to go outside with six of your friends and throw the ball around. Maybe you really can be disciplined and focus on those key pieces um, that are important to you as well. Good. What else you got, man? Hip drive rather than allowing the hips to throw. Are you talking about hip drive in terms of this, like this linear movement? Because we don't – I think we, we kind of went over that. We're not talking about that. Uh, we just – we want to be – on a rotational plane, not this. All right. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. I can't. This is. I think we're good here. Um, if you guys have any questions, shoot us a DM on Twitter. We can't tell you what to focus on if we don't know who you are. Um, we're going to be posting them on YouTube. Um, I mean, yeah, we, we went through a bunch of drills. You can look at the YouTube Cade. The first YouTube and it has a bunch of drills on there as well. But you yeah. can do all those drills with a plyo ball. You can even use a sock if you're in the house and throw that against the wall. There's so many ways you can work on. If you want to go sock, that means your arm's going to get over speed. And you're going to be using your arm fast. Like, and you can still work on all the fundamentals. But I think that we're good. I appreciate you guys. Awesome, Q. All the drills that, that I threw up here tonight and we talked through are all on Twitter and Instagram as well. So you find Quincy, find QB Takeover, find me. Uh, and it's all up there with the explanations and those examples that we looked at. So easy to find, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Q.